Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9. I'm Paul Kretschmer. The title of today's broadcast is Buyware for Your Phone. I received an intriguing thing from someone recently, and we're going to be talking with this gentleman online today. It poses the question, government spyware on your phone. Unfortunately, there's an app for that. Sir, could you introduce yourself by name and the organization that you represent? Yes, um, my name is Shang Li. I'm litigation counsel at the New Civil Liberties Alliance. Uh, we're a uh, nonprofit, nonpartisan law firm that challenges government overreach. How did this case of overreach become known to your organization, and how long has this been going on? Uh, my understanding is it all happened sometime in 2021. Uh, it's when it started, and we heard some press reports and individuals complaining of an app. Um, that the name of this app changed over time. It, it, it used to be called Mass Notified, then it changed to it just said Massachusetts Department of Public Health. But what happens is the app uh, just appeared on individuals' uh, Android devices uh, without those individuals' awareness or permission. Uh, if you look into it, the app is developed by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, um, and, uh, and it, apparently they worked with Google to automatically install this app onto um, at least a million um, Android devices in and around Massachusetts. Did they have an explanation when when that information became public knowledge, and how much have they said about it so far? Uh, they. So initially, they, don't, they think they didn't uh, discuss it with the press. It was only after the lawsuit uh, that we've heard some uh, responses from the uh, from the agency, the Massachusetts agency. Uh, and you have to you know look at it for themselves, but, but kind of to paraphrase, um, their argument is that um, is that this is just an automatic update. That uh, it's not an app at all, but just an automatic kind of update to the settings. Um, however, uh, that doesn't seem to track with what we know because it actually appears in your phone. And if you go, you know, you go into settings, but you, you have to hit, you know, see my app. So if you say see my app, it shows up as an app. It shows up in the app store or did when it was available. It showed up on the app store as an app. Uh, and all the media and journalists accounts of this uh, refer to it as an app. It, it, it calls itself an app. Um, you know, if you, if you go on your Android phone, and some people in Massachusetts may be able to do this and look in their See My App uh, section of their phone, and they will be able to see there's probably uh, an app called Massachusetts Department of Health uh, or Massachusetts Department of Public Health, uh, and, and which, by the way, they named it after themselves, which makes it pretty clear, <laughs> pretty easy to figure out who did it. Is this something... Um you alluded to this a moment ago. Is this something that that people in Massachusetts could go to the uh, App Store for Android devices and find this there, or did they have to go to Google for it? No, this is something. Oh, they could have voluntarily downloaded, but it was, they didn't have to because it was put on there by Google or by the by the Google working with uh, the Massachusetts agency. Now we understand this program has ended. The end of the as pandemic, you know, stopped it being as serious. Uh, the, the agency and Google stopped this practice in uh, a few months ago, uh, but the agency has told us that they they uh, they have collected quite a bit of data, uh, data that Google gave them, and data that um, that other private partners that they work with have given them through that was collected by this app. Um, and and part of our lawsuit, uh, part of the goal of that lawsuit is to get the agency to now delete all that data. Which, which we contend was unlawfully obtained from uh, Massachusetts citizens. There has been a lot of criticism of um, vendors within the digital community producing this kind of software or app or whatever you, however you want to call it, collecting information like Meta, for instance, or Google. Uh, has there been any explanation from the state of Massachusetts as to why they thought it was okay for a state agency to do something that private industry has been condemned for? Uh, I, I'm not really sure. It's a little, oh, we haven't heard that explanation yet. And it's a little bit uh, interesting in that Massachusetts actually sued Google for similar practice of uh, uh, misleading customers uh, into uh, agreements, or into uh, misleading customers into data into believing that data, their location data was being protected when in fact Google was actually selling it. And Massachusetts got something like a $10 million settlement from that. But then to turn around and work with Google um, to do the same thing to their own citizens seems uh, seems an interesting choice. Uh, and we will say that our, our 
would go through your phone. Was it entirely an initiative of 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 the uh, health department doing this up there? And if so, uh, where did they get the authority to do it? Did they have to go to the governor or some other uh, Massachusetts state agency? Uh, that has not come out through the litigation yet. We're, we're you know we're not at the discovery stage, so uh, so I can't really answer that question. I, I will say you know this all sort of started back when Google and Apple together released. A code or a application program interface that allows any state authority to build uh, contact tracing apps. And many states did, New York, Virginia, California. Uh, but the difference is those states made their apps uh, downloadable on a voluntary basis. Uh, what Massachusetts did that's different is work with Google to automatically uh, download an app on people's phones, whether those those owners wanted it or not. And, and that is the sort of invasion of property and privacy um, that where, you know, what contending occurred here and, and where the constitutional violation uh, arises. We're speaking about one state agency in one state. However, since this has come to light, could this represent what some people might refer to as the nose of the camel under the tent, meaning it may have started in Massachusetts, but if people handle it in a very low key below the radar way you, you you might see this sort of thing popping up in other states around the united states if it wasn't stopped or if your litigation wasn't moving forward i, I hope uh, other states have not done this i will say we did look at practices in other states and did not find uh similar sort of abuses through, through this particular app or this particular uh contact tracing um you know set of apps that were developed, and other states seem to have been um, truly made theirs vol voluntary. Uh, I, I won't, you know, I wouldn't say that that necessarily proves there's no other wrongdoing going on, uh, but we did take a look and didn't, uh, we didn't hear uh, from anyone complaining of, for example, California doing this. Uh, it's, it's only the state of uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that uh, that we, you know, have, have credible, you know, hard evidence of uh, engaging this practice of installing an unwanted app on their citizens' phones. Uh, and I certainly hope that, that the fact that we didn't uncover anything in California, New York, means that wasn't happening. Um, it means you know, a little more assurance that there's more uh, respect for liberty and privacy in, in those other uh, jurisdictions. I must say it surprises me a little bit that, that, that you were not able to say that that anything like this is insofar as you were aware hadn't happened in California already because from my recollection California is often a trendsetter in initiatives that oftentimes turn up in other parts of the country like lower emission standards for cars where m most states seem to piggyback on California's emission standards for instance or the initiative that the governor of California has been doing recently to um, push electric electric vehicles as much as possible, and getting the 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 fuel burning ones off the road as soon as possible. Yeah, that's, that's I mean that's true in that context. We just haven't seen it here, and perhaps that's because uh, uh, those states that made it available for voluntary download actually saw a large uptick in down in sufficient number of people voluntarily downloading it. Whereas in Massachusetts, what what sort of happened was in April 2021, Massachusetts came up with. Uh, kind of version one of this contact tracing app, which was in fact for voluntary download. And if you go, um, you know, to, to the Google Store for that app, you'll see that everyone complains. Oh, not enough people are using it. And it, the way these apps work is that the more people use it, the more effective it is. And uh, and so, the, so perhaps in response to the fact that nobody was doing it voluntarily, Massachusetts decided to do it involuntarily, uh, where you didn't have the same kind of pressure in California because everyone's voluntarily downloading this. It occurs to me that, that the timeline includes the period of COVID-19 pandemic. And on my phone, there has been a COVID tracing piece of software that, that you could either get information from contacts around you where someone had been traced as COVID, sense, uh, COVID having COVID, or that you might have COVID yourself and be able to turn into a database tied to that app so that other people around you would be aware of, of the fact that you'd been infected. Um, it, it w is it possible to speculate as to whether or not the one in Massachusetts 
the may, only major difference was that it was involuntary as opposed to someone in Connecticut choosing to download that app because it was available? That's right. So I think the difference, I, I believe, I don't have the whole list, but I think Connecticut had one and it was available for voluntary download. And so if you, know, if you choose to download this app and you, know, and you knew that this app does share um, a certain amount of your, your health and, and kind of location data and proximity data because it works by um, tracking you know your proximity to others. You have to know that you were close to this other person for some number of time at some distance uh, to know whether you one of you exposed the other. Uh, so so it creates a record of that information. And if you voluntarily put that app you know on your phone, uh, you're voluntarily creating that record. And that's you know that's that's just a decision the individual makes, but if the state is doing it involuntarily, then the state is the one that's creating the record uh, and, and, and gather information about that individual without that individual consent, uh, and that's where uh, the, the constitutional problem comes from. Uh, again, like your individual choice to have that app or not, that's, you know, could be wise, it could be not wise, everyone's free can, you know, assess risk and then and decide how much privacy they want, uh, but when that choice is taken away from you, uh, that's the problem. Okay, um, is that the real crux of the matter that it was that it was involuntary? It seems that your case is riding on that. It, it is, yeah. That that it was that the uh, that the software was automatically downloaded onto people's phones, whether they wanted it or not, whether they voluntarily took it or not. Um, and, and in fact, most people did not voluntarily. You can you know look at the reviews. <laughs> if you have hundreds of or even thousands of reviewers saying, "Hey, what is this thing on my phone? I don't like it." Uh, how did I get here? And, and one of the more insidious parts is that um, even if you figure it out and see it on your phone and you delete it, it, it comes back. It seems that periodically Massachusetts would have would re-downloaded it on your phone. So if you delete it in May, perhaps it'll come back in July and you without you knowing it. And then it's only a few more months until you realize it was on your phone all this time. And you try to delete it again and then it comes back in January. Uh, so it's, it's uh, uh, kind of a problem of whack a mole um, and from June 2021 until, I guess, May 2023, uh, the citizens of Massachusetts didn't, you know, didn't have a choice. They had to let the government into their phones for the purpose of this app. Uh, and it also affected, I understand, people who live near Massachusetts and, and, and travel through Massachusetts. So if you were in Massachusetts during one of these download periods, it would have shown up on your phones, too. We've heard folks from Rhode Island and, and Maine and New Hampshire uh, one of our clients that actually lives in New Hampshire uh, had to put on their phone why they happen to be in Massachusetts. I'm sure, you know, some residents of Connecticut, uh, if they had taken a vacation in Massachusetts or driven through um, during a time when the government of Massachusetts was downloading this app, they could very well find the app on their, um, on their phones as well. What's the timeline? Do you have an approximate timeline? I know it's, it's sometimes a little difficult to determine... The, the steps in a court yeah, case and, 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 and how long it takes or, or what goes on at what point? Yeah, we're at the motion to dismiss stage right now, which is the government has asked the court to dismiss. We've opposed that request to dismiss our case. Um, we expect a ruling. You know, the court can take its own time on, on the ruling. But once uh, after that, if the court rules for us, we'll proceed to what's called discovery, at which point we can actually obtain information from the government regarding the, the details of the program. Thank you very much, sir, for, for the generosity of your time today. Thank you. From the New Civil Liberties Alliance, that was Counsel Shung Lee. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretzmer on the WIHS Journal, public affairs from 104.9 WIHS.